So it started actually in 2015. Um, in Ghana, we had this thing we called Doom so <laughs> There were a lot of people not passing as compared to previous years. And um, we realized that's cause of this issue. So I was thinking, but we have light, sir. We have light for 12 hours and this is happening. It's about some of us, no light at all. Imagine what they are getting. So children, what, what would be friendly to them? I mean, we thought a file would be best, but then I was thinking, I was like, oh, backpacks. Everybody has a school bag. By the end of 2019, had our first product ready. I, I was very excited. I was like, my idea is here. <laughs> I mean, I can see this, like, wow. So my name is Samuel. So it's Samuel. Abena Sabong Asante. Um, I'm the CEO of Kanya Energy and who am I am? Wow. I am a girl. <laughs> um, interesting question. I, I sort of always rehearse what I need to say in the boardroom. <laughs> confident, I'm outspoken, I'm smart. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think I'm a very calm and relaxed person and um, sometimes my looks deceive people people think I'm just like young and <laughs> but I am I'm very I had everything screwed on well <laughs> yeah and yeah I'm, I'm a dreamer I like to think about things and figure out how to make those things come to reality so um, in my free time I like painting drawing those things because I I like to dream a lot and stuff like that and I love colors um what else yeah and I'm an entrepreneur I love entrepreneurship actually Kania um, we want to use transformative technology to provide energy alternatives to people all around Africa but the first thing we are doing is trying to use OPB cell technology to provide light for people living in areas with low or no supply of electricity. Yes, yeah, so that's our first aim or the first goal of Kanya. OPB cells stands for organic photovoltaic cells. So it's another type of solar cells. So the solar cells we normally see are the silicon ones, the one used for the buildings, etc. But these ones are organic, so they are very flat. They are as thin as A4 sheets. So um, we are trying to use these ones because they are environmentally friendly, first of all. They are portable and they are more affordable. So we are trying to use these cells to try and provide light for people. Um, so what we do is we take the cells and we put them on backpacks because backpacks are things that a lot of people use, especially children. Um, and so as you go about your day, the solar energy is trapped through these cells and stored in a battery. Once you get home, just plug in the lamp light. <laughs> so it started actually in 2015. Um, in Ghana, we had this thing we called Doom so. <laughs> so we had 12 hours of light, 24 hours of no light. <laughs> yeah, and during that time, I used to hear a lot about um, the final results. So the high school, senior high school and junior high school results. So there were a lot of people not passing as compared to previous years and um, we realized that's cause of this issue. So I was thinking, but we have light, sir. We have light for 12 hours and this is happening. It's about some of us, no light at all. Imagine what they are getting. So I started thinking about it. Then I came to Ashes in 2017 and um, I met a group of people who were thinking about this problem as well. So we all came together um, and um, we tried to find a solution for this. So we came up with a product that was with files. So the files that we use in the office, um, we wanted to use that as a tool to provide light. Um, so with that concept, we even went all the way to Halt Price in Dubai, the regional finals. Unfortunately, we didn't make it, <laughs> um, but we learned a lot. When we came back, um, the team said, no, this is the end <laughs> of it. But I was like, no, I see a lot of potential in this. So I took it up and I was like, I'm going to go on with it. Um, so with that, I don't have engineering background. I did business admin. So 
so I had to go and search for people doing engineering. So what I did was I went back into the community in Brekusu and I started gathering feedback on our product. Yes, and um, so I put together all the feedback I got, found a friend who does engineering and I was like, this is the feedback I have, this is our product. And these are the ideas I have. I mean, we can work together and make it all work together. Yeah, so that's why I did it. We've been working at it since 2017. One of the main things we got was feedback on the style of our bag um, or our product then. Then we're using a file. So um, I got back thinking with that, that short feedback. I was like, okay, children, what, what would be friendly to them? I mean, we thought a file would be best. But then I was thinking, I was like, oh, backpacks. Everybody has a school bag. Like, you have it around. But then the thing is, how can we put cells on a school bag and make it work? So it's not too heavy, it's not too... So I was like, okay, I don't, I can't do this. Let me ask. So we're like, okay, we have a school bag. I have a school bag. I want to put the OPV cells on the school bag, find a way to conserve all of this energy and make it work. Yeah, so that was it. But then when I got the school bag idea, I started looking around and there were so many other things we could use. We could use umbrellas, funny packs, like clothing, like it just went wild from there. So um, we, um, I spoke to my friend and we said we'll start with a backpack and then so that's how we came up with our first product. But now, almost every day as I go through Accra, there's something I think we can use. So um, I just put it down and then now we are starting to we we'll starting researching um, to research into other products we can use OPV cell technology with. It's been a winding road. <laughs> um, so the OPV cells are actually made in Denmark. So we have to get them from there and bring them here um, to Accra. Then um, how to take care of the whole process at the port the, yeah stressful but yeah <laughs> um, so once we get that um, so the bags are made locally and the bags are made from recycled sachet rubber so in Ghana we drink like water from these rubbers so yeah we have that and it's recycled into the bag so we get local producers for that and we bring in all the lamps and everything from China so once we get all the products, we hand it, I hand it over to the engineering team. They assemble it together and then we take it to the community. But now we want to move the assembling units to the community so that we can also employ people, people get jobs. And also people are a part of the whole process. So they know that if this thing is not working, I'm part of the reason it's not working so that they are forced to give their best whilst they are working for Kanea. So uh, that's uh, what we want to do. So hopefully by the end of the year, we would have set like our small office in the community where they can start assembling. Um, so by the end of 2019, I think it was November, October. Yeah, we had our first product ready. So we had our initial products, but that's what we, we used for the feedback and stuff. But in 2019 was when we first did the bag, the backpack idea. Um, yeah, I, I was very excited. I was like, my idea is here. <laughs> I mean, I can see this like, wow. And like everybody was excited. Like I sent the pictures to everybody I knew like my bag is here, <laughs> my bag is here. And we're all so excited but then when we got it because you see opv cells are new all over the world so it's still under the research phase so we encountered a lot of issues so we had to go back and forth even now like two months ago we had to recall all our products yeah because we found some engineering loophole <laughs> in the conversion and um, so yeah but thankfully we found what the problem was and we are working on it mm -hmm. yeah so so it's just like a normal backpack so you just pick it up put it in your back so so you just do anything you would normally do walk go to a room sit down put the backpack behind the chair like you normally would um so you don't have to do anything i just there but 
the solar energy is being trapped by these cells, which are already on the bag. So you just continue with your day's activity. You can run around, roll on the ground. <laughs> I mean, little children are known for lo uh, rolling on the ground and stuff. So when you get home, normally, like, you remove your backpack, you change your clothes. So you just pick up your backpack, maybe place it on the table, and then you pick up the lamp. So it's a, it's, it's a foldable lamp. So when you pick it up, it has a USB port, just like your phone charger, it has the cord with the USB. So you just plug it into the battery in the bag, at the side of the bag. So it has a zip at the side, you just plug it in and the light turns on. First of all, it provides light. So that's one of the main things it does, it provides light for the people. So we realized that now people can stay up longer, so like the children used to use candles and stuff which were not good for your eyes etc but now you could stay up longer you can do some homework or some reading and even for the families now you see a lot more people like interact as a family because there's light like we take a lot of people take it for granted like having the opportunity to like sit with your family to maybe talk or something because actually because you have light and you have a place to sleep like these places they go to bed pretty early because there's no light but now with that they are able to have some form of living mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah and people also get to like for example some families were able to charge their radios so at night like someone is also listening to their like there's so many things we take for granted because we have electricity but there are no experiences the quality of life the living standard of the people is affected and also um we employ people from the community so um you'll be surprised what like 500 cds or 300 cds is doing for somebody yeah so i i've seen how not only the bags but the employment of the people has made a difference in the livelihoods of the people. Um, I think it's the first person we ever I ever spoke to. She was called Mary. Um, she lives in Brekusu. So Brekusu is where Ashesi University is located and it's on a hill. So the other side of the hill is a community there and Mary was the first person, she and her family, who accommodated me and I gave her the first product which was the file and the um, she was able to, the first day I gave her the bag, she was able to do her homework right there. And she was, her, her mother was like, oh, sometimes they had to go to school early in the morning to try and finish the work before the, 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 the teacher comes. But now, though she's not educated, she can see that her, her children are studying. So she does like appre appreciate it and see. And then she, she also mentioned that she herself gets to see as well. And they don't need to go and buy like kerosene and stuff because sometimes they use open fires and the heat and all this is dangerous and so this was very safe for them she had baby so the baby could crawl around and, and no one is like weary of the fact that maybe the fire will burn her or something because everything was very safe and everything so mm -hmm. yeah so we would want to not only focus on light light is just the first part of it but we want to be the go-to people or company for energy alternatives. So we want to, in the future, look at maybe um, cooking, how to use this for cooking, for transportation, for so many other things, because it's an affordable option. And um, I believe that electricity is also one of the things that helped us to all be where we are at this point because we can um, plan our lives without thinking because we have things like electricity when i was taking my exams i can stay up all night to study because i have electricity but others don't have and even the impact it has on people who work like you can have other source of income because of electricity like people in the rural areas people are now thinking oh maybe I can use one of your bags as a way to charge phones for people. Like you can make money and other sources of income from that. So I think the main goal of Kanea is to provide alternative ways to provide energy, not only for education or for 
like income but even as a family unit like the feeling of togetherness you can all sit down together eat a meal because you have electricity available like sometimes we think we take so many things for granted but then with electricity you can have the thing yeah no not even with electricity alone or light but transportation cooking like there's so much we can do with that yeah so that's mm-hmm. why 